course you can't hear me because I don't have the audio switched on. Right, let me start again. Okay, everybody, welcome. Um, uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I apologize for the loss of sound there. Um, okay, you can hear me now, good. Okay, so as I was saying, but nobody heard me, uh, I hope you're all keeping well. Uh, thanks for, um, for joining me on this uh, stream. And, and we're going to be um, doing something slightly diff different with this stream. Uh, most of the other streams and videos that we've been doing focus on the uh, on the RSP hardware. So uh, now, yeah, I <laughs> apologize for that. It was a setting at my end. Uh, I do apologize. Um, but in this stream, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, how you're using SDR Uno uh, with other third party hardware. Um, we know a lot of people that have the RTL dongles. Um, Use, uh, use a variety of software, um, SDR Uno included. So um, we're going to show how to get up and running uh, with SDR Uno. We're going to show those people that aren't familiar with SDR Uno um, what it looks like and how it operates with the multiple panels. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the features that uh, that are in Uno and some of the features that are in um, that are in the main version. And how the differences are, and uh, we'll come on. We'll come on to a lot of that. Uh, hello, hello to everybody. I see them. Um, uh, there's a lot of questions. I, 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 well, I think what we'll do is we'll stick to um, we'll stick to questions at the end. Um, there'll be a lot of time. I can stay here for as long as long as anybody needs. But if I if I if I can get get through the presentation and show you, um, it'll probably answer a lot of the questions as we go. But if I don't answer anything specific, I'm happy to I'm happy to answer anything at, at the end. And it and the presentation may generate more questions for you as we go. But let's um Okay, so let's get started. So just a little bit of a background as to SDR Uno. Um it was originally developed in Italy uh as a program called Studio One. Um been a I think it'd been in development for a good few years before um, before we acquired it, and it was a commercial package that was that cost you over a hundred euros, maybe one hundred and fifty euros. Um, but it was extremely, extremely good. And when we had the opportunity to uh, purchase the IP rights to it, um, we, we we jumped at the chance, and we've been retargeting, uh, retargeting it, and we called it now SDR Uno to focus on uh, on the RSP platform. Um, there is an EXTO version, which some of you are probably already familiar with, um, and that pr pretty much compares to the demo version that was in Studio uh, One originally. And there are some limitations on the e EXTO version compared to the, the main version. We'll talk a little bit about those, and um, and we'll come. And so, if you can, if you have any questions about differences, hold fire because we'll probably cover we'll be covering that, and we can talk a bit about that at the end. Um, so to get started with SDR Uno and pre pretty much any third party hardware that has an EXTIO um, a plugin, uh, it doesn't have to be an RTL device, but anything that has an EXTIO plugin, um, you just obviously you need the plugin from the manufacturer or from whoever distributes the hardware, along with any uh, drivers or whatever else you need to get that particular piece of hardware up and running. Make sure the EXTO plugin is put into the documents folder because that's where SDR Uno will look for it. And also, um, if you have multiple EXTIO plugins in the same folder, when you start Uno, it will ask you uh, which one you want to start with. If there's only one in there, it will just automatically load it up and start, which is, I think, is a very similar operation to how other SDR applications work with EXTIO plugins. So um, let's uh, have a look at the have a look at the screen. And when you start e uh, SDR Uno, the EXTIO version, this will be the first thing you see. And uh, this is a main. This is the main panel. Uh, this is where all the hardware control is done. Um, it has a number of um, buttons and menus. And I'll just briefly tell you the main points um, of each of these. Um, it, so it's got a settings panel. And you can use SDR Uno EXTIO version with not only an EXTIO plugin, but you can also use it um, from the sound card or as a WAV or with a WAV file input. 
Um, and here you would specify the, if you're using the sound card, here you would specify the input audio device. Um, calibration, you could apply a PPM offset so you can correct for any frequency errors in the hardware that you're using. Um, you can also use offsets if you are using down converters. And um, the T Mate controller is disabled in the EXTO version, and we'll come back to that. Um, it supports OmniRig. So if you want to use this uh, as a pan adapter with your with your hardware, you can. That's um, so this connects to OmniRig, which is a free piece of software that you download from DX Atlas. Uh, and um, many of you are probably already familiar with how that connects to your your your, your transceiver. If you're not familiar with how that works, we've got videos as well and documentation that Steve uh, has put together, um, which you can find in our apps catalog. Or if you search the YouTube channel, you'll find videos that he's done on that. Uh, and some other settings where you can set things like the UTC time and the polarity of the of the mouse wheel with controlling frequency. In the uh, in the options panel, um, here you can specify what input you are you're using. So here you can see that we're using an RTL device. I've got version three, um, so we can look at uh, look at HF as well as VHF. And you can specify also a sound card input or a WAV file. Uh, also in the uh, options panel, if you if you do want to use something like an IF output of a transceiver, you may need to swap the I and Q. So you can do that here. Uh, and also um, there's a the the user manual is always available. So not all of this will apply to the XTI version, but um, it, it's worth looking at through here. Because uh, some of this information will will be will be useful to both the EXTIO and the and the main version. So let's uh, let's open up some panels and 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 have a look at um, look at how this how this works. So we've got the RX button here, which opens up the RX control panel, and this is modelled on a on a sort of a sort of a, I guess a generic transceiver front end, um, where you've got a keypad over here which functions as a regular keypad as well as uh, you've got the band buttons and it will take you to the, the those particular bands, a 40 meter band, 30, etc. Um, I'll come on to the specifics of the RX control panel in a, in a minute. Let, we'll just get the windows open first. We've then got the uh, SP1 panel, which is the uh, input, the input spectrum display. Um, and at the SP2 window, which is the auxiliary demodulated spectrum display um, and so um, they operate very in a very similar but they obviously have different different um, different inputs uh, we'll also open up the control panel uh, the sorry the, the recorder panel so here you can control how much um, of the IQ you you record so um, the record function will record the entire IQ stream so you can record um, and for as long as you have hard drive space for it uh, IQ streams particularly at higher bandwidths can get very large indeed um, so just be careful when you're recording that you've actually got the disk space enough to record if you press uh, right click on here you'll actually get a prompt to show to, to specify where your record folder is going to be um, we'll carry on and open up some some uh, the uh, the last panel which is the the memory panel and here um, you can either open up S1B files, which are um, SDR Uno's um, memory file. So they, they contain either existing files that you may have got from somebody else with lists of frequencies, or there'll be files where you can store frequencies in. Uh, and, um, and last but not least, in fact, there's two windows to go. <laughs> So the EXTIO, sorry, the EXW button pulls up the um, the EX control panel, and here you've got things like um, your audio AGC control and the noise blanker with the uh, FM de emphasis and uh, FM AFC. Uh, now the final panel, which hasn't isn't actually anything to do with SDR Uno, is obviously the EXTIO control panel itself. Now the only way to bring this up is to make sure you've got the focus of the main window and press H. And then you'll get this window appear. Uh, and so that's very important to remember because that's the only way to actually open up this control panel. So um, 
you make sure the main panel has the focus press h and then that will appear okay um uh, yeah so if you want guidance on on the as a pan adapter yeah there's videos on our youtube channel you can find on that um uh, and if you have you have a problem you can always come through to our ticket system this endu okay so now we have all the windows open um so the way the way SDR Uno works is that it's a it's a very modular system. You can span the windows across uh, different monitors, or um, you can resize a number of them. So the SP One panel um, can can be resized. Um, I can I can resize that. I can move these around. I can have them in any position I want. Once I've got a, a layout that I'm that I'm happy with, then I can hold the left control button down. And left click on where the workspace is in the main main the main panel, and still holding the left control down whilst I've got the menu up, I select the workspace I want to store it in. So if I click on the default workspace, this has now stored uh, this layout as my default workspace, and I can prove that by selecting the workspace, selecting another workspace that I haven't used before. You can see all the windows go back to the default. With just the the main the main panel showing and if i then select the default workspace i'm now back to the layout that i just saved okay so now we have all the windows open um i'll quickly run through some of the main features of each of these windows so the rx control panel um has a number of functions it's it's where the uh where your where your vfo frequency is is is, is specified and it's also where the demodulator modes are set. So you have AM, synchronous AM, FM, uh, CW, and then the uh, double and single sideband modes. You can also set, select uh, various filter bandwidths. And for FM, you've got the sub modes of narrowband, medium, uh, wide, and stereo wideband FM. Um, there's also the squelch and mute um, and volume controls at the bottom of the. Um, of, of the window, uh, I mentioned the the, the the keypad function. We'll come back to that uh, in the, in the demonstration. But basically, it'll operate as both a normal keypad when you're entering frequencies, and also a kind of a shortcut to get to uh, band frequencies. And we'll also just touch on how this differs from the the main version of SDR Uno, where we've quite significantly enhanced this uh, this this feature. The uh, EX control window. Um, uh, as I said before, it is a way where you can adjust things like the audio AGC setting, um, the noise blanker. Uh, be careful when using the noise blanker because some people leave it on um, when this is this this value is, and they're not looking at what this value is, and it can completely remove your signal. So be careful when using the noise blanker. Um, if you're not sure, turn it off and just check that your signal is actually there um we'll uh we'll get the 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 spe the, the, the uh, input going i'm just at a random uh a random frequency at the moment and um i'll just sh i can show you the sp the main sp and the auxiliary S sp settings i'll just show you one because they're, they're very common there's a lot of commonality to both so in in here you can specify the waterfall things like the waterfall palette by default, it comes up as Spectran. We tend to use Spectran EXT, and you can see that it gives you a better contrast between the noise floor and the signal. Um, we also uh, tend to turn the waterfall averaging off. That also gives you a gives you a better uh, a better display, uh, and you can adjust things like the spectrum base. So we can adjust the where the, where the noise floor sits within relative to the um, to the, to the window and also the, the if I move this out of the way if I adjust the spectrum range you can see that you can scale um, you can actually scale the um, the signal to fill the display if you if you want to do that um, and some other sort of you know very similar sort of settings in there for things like gain and contrast of the waterfall there's also a few other different display modes you've got the just the spectrum by itself uh, just the waterfall by itself uh, the default view is the spectrum and the waterfall, half and half of the display. Um, but you can also have, there's this combo button where you can display the spectrum 
overlaying on the waterfall. Uh, but most people tend to use the uh, the spectrum and waterfall half and half display. Okay, so um, just talk about the um, I've talked about all these windows here. The the just the important point with the memory panel. So the memory panel connects to the virtual receiver as long as one of these buttons is pressed. So the um, these three buttons up here in the RX control panel, the first one connects to OmniRig. The middle one is what connects to the memory panel. And the third one connects to the teammate controller, which is not relevant for this version. Um, but that's that's where that control is. As long as the MCTR button is pressed, um, then then the memory panel will be linked to this receiver, and so I can I can select frequencies uh, here, and you'll see that they are that they are changing. Um, you can also zoom in to the uh, so I can if I go over here and I select a frequency, so I can also zoom in to the spectrum, and I can drag the frequency display. At the bottom of the spectrum and I can zoom in as well um, that's that okay um, I also wanted just to have a look at the um, the RX control panel um, settings so I'll uh, just cover the main ones in here the output device uh, by default it will use your default Windows output device but you can Use things like virtual audio uh, cables if you want to connect the uh, if you want to send the output of this to uh, other digital decoders or other software that use um, use a sound card input. You can you can do specify that there. Um, uh, Cat control is here, so by default SDR Uno will operate as a um, as a Kenwood TS uh, four eighty. Um, so you can control uh, SDR Uno just like a transceiver via CAT, and then it has, as I said before, it has Omni Rig control. So you can specify whether it's the control is one way or bidirectional here. Um, and then there's some other settings about you, you can change the uh, the background colors to some of the windows in here. So that pretty much covers um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the buttons. Um, with the memory panel, um, you can save and load uh, S1B files by right-clicking, and then you can either start a new bank or open an existing bank. Save this one. Uh, save, save these changes. If you if you make any changes in here, you could save this as a as the same file that's been opened or as a new one. Uh, and you can spec you can select where the um, where the banks are loaded from as well. So that's all done within these, within the within that panel there. So I think that's pretty much covered um, covered the windows and what they and what they do. Um, don't forget that the recorder records the entire IQ input spectrum, and that might be useful if you want to say record um, record the IQ overnight, the IQ stream overnight. And then you might want to play it back in the morning and analyze what was what was going on in the bands that um, you couldn't see live. So when you open up the um, use the main window and specify the WAV file uh, here, that you can open up the, the IQ uh, stream that you've recorded, and then you can just play that back as if it was a live a live stream and you were doing it in real time. So now we'll have a look at um, let's go and have a look at some uh, some HF. So I've got the HF antenna. So let's go down to medium wave. And what we need to do in medium wave, we need to put the the RTL device into direct sample mode. Now you'll see that when I click this menu, that only disabled is shown. Um, some reason and I don't know why there is a bug that uh, what I've seen with EXTIO control panels those options are available but you just have to use the up and down arrows to select them so if I use the the out the, the down arrow twice I'll get to the Q input and now you can see that I've got the I've got the spectrum going on the screen 
now that I'm in medium wave, I know that the channel size is uh, is nine kilohertz. So I'm going to right click on the frequency display in the RX control panel, and I'm going to set set the step size to nine kilohertz. You can see it changes up in this top left hand corner, and um, I'm also going to have to set the right mode. So I want AM, uh, and I want um, eight kilohertz, or yeah, I could have an eight eight kilohertz bandwidth. And then I just click on a frequency and we can hopefully, uh, we should be able to hear it. So if I uh, just get my headset on here. I'm hoping that you can hear that. 11 kilohertz for a better, better, better sound. Um, hoping that that sound level is, is right. And then I, because uh, I've set the nine kilohertz channel off uh, separation I can then just click on these and all of these signals will appear on channel and uh, we turn on the audio for the desktop and that might actually be ready on channel there's one channel there click on another channel on the audio for the desktop and that might there click on one there there's one channel there and there is another channel there there's another channel there so let's have a quick look at some other bands um, I'm just going to mute this for a minute so let me go to so let's have a, I'm going to change the step size to 500 hertz um, and I'm going to go Use the band buttons let to go up, go the, to, up the band. Let's have a look at a so uh, let's see. We'll start with uh, go to 40 meters. The There's some stuff here. To go up um, up the band. So, so this is going to be uh, lower side band. I need to set that mode. There's some stuff here. I don't know if we'll. This is going to be lower side band. Any 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 sequence. There's some stuff here. So, I don't know if this is going to be. I can zoom in. I can also zoom in and I can check. I can signal as they are. I can also zoom in and I can check. There we go. You probably heard me twice. I apologize for that. I had, I had the monitor going on. So if I now, uh, I'll just move. So we can check a few other bands. So that was the, uh, and don't forget. The band buttons just take you to that frequency. So pressing the 40 meter band took me to um, took me to 7.3 megahertz. But obviously that band isn't 2.4 megahertz wide. So you uh, you will need to zoom in, um, and uh, we, we'll we'll talk about band framing when um, when we get to the uh, to the um, to the main version. Let's have a look at. Uh, we'll just zoom out again and we'll just have a have another look so we can go up to there's a 30 meter so this is all 9.6 9.7 there's signals over here I presume they're below 10 megahertz so they're probably lower sideband uh and then i'll go up to 20 meters um and some of these signals will be am um but we can we, we can click on some of these i can select am and then we can have a look we can zoom in and stretch the frequency across and we'll see that some of these are actually um am signals see that that's um so this now is um so that's sort of hf and uh let's go uh let's go up to vhf so i've got to do a couple of things here Firstly, um, I've got to disable the direct sampling. So I'll go to the X control panel and change that to disabled. I also then obviously need to specify a frequency up in the VHF band. Uh, so let's go up to 90 megahertz. And we need to change the mode to FM. Um, we've got wideband FM and 192 kilohertz for the, uh, for the, for the, for the bandwidth. 
Uh, and once again, oh, and also what I like to do is to change the step tuning to 100 kilohertz. Uh, and then it doesn't really matter how far zoomed out I am. I know that when I click on a frequency, I'm going to be I'm going to be on I'm going to be on the channel on the channel frequency. Um, and I can also then use I've got some other uh, FM stations stored in my memory panel. So I've got the MCTR button pressed, so I can select any of these. We've got 89.1 megahertz, so that's Radio 2 for me. BBC Radio 2 in the UK, 98.8. Um, that's BBC Radio 1. And what I haven't done, and nobody has spotted the deliberate mistake, is that I haven't switched antennas. And so now let me switch over to my two meter antenna from my piece of long wire which I was using before and hopefully uh, hopefully we'll have better better luck and I can just monitor that um, that's yeah there we go uh, hopefully you can hear that sound but that's I can't play too much of it obviously for copyright reasons radio 3 and I can just click on Classic FM and and that all tunes all tunes nicely. So that's that's uh that's pretty much everything um there. We there's a there's a few other other features. Um we've got AFC, so this if I tune this, let me just try and find a better signal. Um slightly better signal. If I now uh, press uh, the AFC button in the EX control panel, you can see that it's now tracking uh, tracking the um, the center frequency, and so it will tune out uh, errors in the um, in the in the hardware. So uh, FM AFC is 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 quite is is quite a good one, and that will stay tracked now. Um, and you can see that it's just continually tracking. Um, you've also got de-emphasis uh, for FM broadcast. Um, there's two two different states: fifty microseconds and seventy-five microseconds. Uh, up in the up in the uh, auxiliary spectrum display, let's just raise the um, we'll raise the spectrum base slightly, and um, we've got this button here, FMAF. And if I oh, and there we go, it's gone too high now. So if I press that, you can actually see the demodulated signal there. Um, there's wideband FM and then there's stereo wideband FM. So if I press that, we'll get the stereo signifier here. Um, and uh, that's pretty much pretty much it. So hopefully that covers a lot of. Um, hopefully that covers um, all of the functionality in in uh, in SDR Uno with the EX control panel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly um, I'm going to close this down, and we're going to quickly fire up the um, the main version of the uh, of SDR Uno, and I'll just show you the, some of the differences, and we can talk about that um, talk about those differences shortly. So I've got the main version here. One of the things we've got now in SDR Uno is auto layouts, so I can just move the main control the main panel to any monitor that i'm using and i can select default and it will auto populate fill the entire the entire screen um it will calculate what um what size screen you've got and it will auto populate for you um so we've, we've done a couple of things with the with with uh, sdr uno Firstly, we've done some usability things, a bit like the Windows um, layouts that you've seen there, uh, and also we've extended the um, the band functions quite a bit. So if I start the um, if I start the stream going, and if I uh, broadcast live, and if I make sure that my antenna is connected there we go i've got antenna now so i've got some signals 
and what you can see there i've pressed the medium wave button and what you see that not only has, has it gone to the the medium wave frequency but it's also now framed the medium wave band completely um the update is here is quite Other setting up. Okay, so we've also got uh, a lot of other bands here. So we've got the ham lower bands. So we've got the bands as before. So we've got 40 meters, um, 30, 20, and we've got things like the notch control, obviously, things like that are different. Um, you can you can see that now there's the software notches uh in the um in the rx control panel that's not in the extio version um the noise reduction facility that's not in the x control version the rds window that's not there either um and the obviously the the so the the, the teammate controller that we talked about that's not there and there's a sample rate limit on the ex control version they're really the differences between the EX control version and the version really that we started with. What we've done, but like I said, what we've done with SGR Uno since then is we've added a lot of um, things like for, for usability. And we've also added um, functionality that's tightly integrated to the RSP's architecture. Um, some examples of that, um, one is the band framing. So we've been able to take advantage of the fact that the RSP and have a an arbitrary sample rate specified um so we take advantage of that we've taken advantage of of the rsp architecture when we've implemented the scanner as well um so we've got a nice uh, speed uh, fast scanner and also for things like we're doing diversity so for diversity with the rsp duo where we're taking two streams in from the two tuners and we're processing them in the same sdr application so we've done a lot of work with SDR Uno to really uh, and really show off the functionality of the RSP and actually um, that you probably won't find in 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 in, in, an, in many other applications. Um, so I won't go on too much about uh, about any of this other functionality here. Um, um, We've also got, oh, with, with the recorder as well, the IQ recorder, we've got a scheduler. So you can actually schedule um, schedule the start and stop of the, of the recorder. So there's a number of usability things that we've done, um, as I said. Okay, so let me come back to, um, let me come back to slides and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making some changes to the um, to the EXTIO version of SDR Uno. We haven't touched it in quite a long time, um, primarily because we've been we've been looking at the RSP uh, integration and a lot of the functions there, and we've still got some way to go with some of those features. Um, we've got plugins um, which uh, which will be which will be um, going uh, in our stream next week. Um, we'll also um, uh, so 1.4, which is you've just seen the preview version of 1.4, so you're the first people to really see it. Um, and um, the plugins is, is going to be a quite quite a bit of a game changer uh, for us. But we've got uh, lots of other things to do: uh, remote server, client support. Um, but we will be making some changes to the ex uh, ex2io version, and so we'll be increasing the maximum sample rate. We'll add the RS, the, R, the RDS support back in. We will um, we'll add the software notch filter support and the noise reduction. We'll enable the teammate controllers and where we can some of the usability functions that uh, that you've seen where we can move them back across to the EXTO version. We will. Um, I can't really give you a specific time frame for this, but uh, we will. We will fit this in um, uh, probably a little bit later on this year, um, but uh, it's difficult for us to give any timescales because um, we're a very small team. We actively support a lot of people, 
and so um um but we just you know we try and do we try and spread ourselves uh as as best we can across the different different platforms and the different bits of software and hardware that we support um so that's really that's really all i had in terms of where we are with um with you know, how to get started with the EXTIO version um, and some of the differences between that and the and the, and the main version and where we're going. Uh, if anybody, it's probably uh, one of our shortest streams that we've done, but if anybody has any questions, um, you know, I'd be happy to, to answer them. I don't know if there's been any questions that I've missed. Um, Oh, it starts at 25 megahertz so yeah so this is version 3 the rtl uh, version 3 which has hf support uh if you you've got a direct sample mode so you have to uh, enable that in the ex control panel uh what antenna am i using for the hf i'm just using a long wire that's out the window and up the side of the house as long as i could get it really um and then for for vhf i've just got a I've got a little sort of two meter antenna that's outside. Um, it normally works okay. I'm not in the greatest, I've not got the greatest antenna set up, um, but um, uh, yeah, so long, long, long wires. Uh, I do have some, I do have some, um, some loops and stuff like that. So I do try a different a variety of, of antennas, um, which, which we have to really when we're, um, you know, when we're, when we're testing Testing the hardware on different um, different environments. Okay, does anybody have um, a basic question? When you refer to EXTO version, is this the same as the EXTO plugins 1.2? Could you talk through download mix? So if you've got, um, so you're probably talking about the EXTO plugins on our website. So um, those plugins support our hardware but in other people's SDR software. Um, if you've got an RSP and you want to use SDR Uno, then you don't need any plugins, you just install SDR Uno. SDR Uno will then discover the RSP and and you're and you're you're your way. There's no there's no further setup required. If you want to use an RSP uh, in some other SDR application uh, except SDR console because SDR console has direct support but for HDSDR for example if you want to use it in that then you, you you install the plugins from our downloads page and that will give you access to our hardware if you're using some other hardware with SDR Uno then you need the EXTIO plugin for that particular piece of hardware whether it's an RTL device or you may have something else like a Pack RF or some some other piece of SDR hardware. Um, get the get the EXTO plugin from either the manufacturer may produce one, or there may be a community made one, uh, or your distributor may know of one. Put it in the down. Put it in the documents folder, and then before you start SDR Uno, make sure the hardware is connected, and then start SDR Uno, and it will find um, it will find the EXTO plugin. Um, if you've got, and like I said before, if you've got more than one EXTO plugin in the documents folder, it will ask you which one you want to um, to select. Uh, will ACRF? So what we've decided. So I'll just come to the question in a minute, just to finish up on the EXTO plugins and the EXTO version. What we've done from version one point three three of SDO Uno going forward is that we're including the um, EXTIO version with the main version. And so just want to make sure people don't get confused when you're running when you're running SDR Uno, if you've got an RSP, make sure you run the main SDR Uno application. If you've got some other hardware, make sure you run the EXTIO version. It, people get a little bit confused because there's the two versions installed at the same time. But one's for the RSP ones for the EXTIO supported hardware. Will HackRF run on SDR Uno? If it's got a um, if it's got an EXTIO plugin that's uh, either the manufacturer may have produced one or the may maybe a community developed one, uh, then then it, it will work. But uh, I'm I haven't used the HackRF so uh, I don't know if it has one. 
Um, you'll also need to make sure that it it's, that it will conform to the sample rate limitations that's in the that's currently in the in the EXTO version. So right now the maximum sample rate is two and a half megahertz. Um, we will be as as I said on the slides, we will be increasing the maximum sample rate. So I don't particularly know what sample rates the the Hack RF works at, but that may be something that you need to um, check. When you start SDR Uno, if it fails sample rate, it will tell you. So you'll be out. You, you'll you'll know you'll know straight away whether it's. And then you have to look in the EXTI control panel for that hardware to see if there's a different sample rate setting. I'm not aware of. A decoder for DRM will be added as well as band for FM. I'm not quite sure what you mean. There is a DRM piece of software uh, already called Dream, which I believe. Um, works as far as I'm aware uh, as well as a band for FM um, so there isn't a band button for FM um, FM is uh, the FM broadcast band is about 20 megahertz wide um, so you just need to set your sample rate up to whatever the maximum sample rate is and um, uh, and uh, and then just go to the middle of the FM band uh, but there is no there is no band button at some point in the future, one of the options we're going to do is to have configurable band buttons. So it's possible that you may be able to create, um, you, you could probably create a custom button. Um, and you can also use the memory panel. Uh, so you can set, as I've done here with the, um, with the memory panel on the, uh, just on this demonstration, I've set a number of FM stations in the memory panel, and then I can just click on them and then go straight to those um straight to those straight to those channels uh hackrf will work oh it's mike how, how are you doing mike good to see you um mike will work but you will need to select two mega okay so there you go mike's mike's got you covered with the the hackrf uh extio panel so um so yeah i hope um i hope people have found this helpful um like i say if you have any other questions now's a great time to answer to ask them there's nothing uh there's nothing as you know there's no stupid questions so you know far away um oh good to see you frank nice nice to see you um it's good to see so many people here so um 20 megahertz samples of hack rf okay uh apps uh thanks for this webinar is a fully consumed fully user configurable waterfall palette planned cases it will help um so right now there's a there's a set number of, of of defined palettes um whether we'll be able to open that up uh to a user configurable palette the palette the palette definition is actually um is actually quite tricky um if i showed you the code it's i i showed it to mike mike can explain because mike wanted to do a uh Mike wanted to do a custom palette, uh, and after I showed it to Mike, I think Mike was quite surprised how complex it was. Um, it's quite a lot to it. Um, that's not to say that we wouldn't do in the future, but right now there is a um, there's only a set a set number that you can that you can select. Um, but uh, that is something that I've thought about for. Uh, yeah, it's very complex. I th that is something that I thought about in uh, in 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 the future. And the module currently supports two, four, eight, ten. Okay, so you can select the low sample rates, um, and then uh, when we can get to doing this new version of the EX control, the EX EXTIO version of Uno, then um, uh, you know, you'll be able to use some of those higher sample rates. Okay. Anything else? Um. I don't think I have anything else I need I need to cover. Um like I said, if you um so let's go to the to the end screen and uh if you have any questions, um if you maybe don't have an uh have an RSP and you want to ask a question about about uh, some of the differences and moving to moving to them, you can uh you can ask on our support system on our website. Um there's a very active Facebook group um which got almost 13,000 members now so that's really uh that's really going going very well 
uh, and there's there are some forums as well if you um and all of these places have got very very helpful people um and it's um it's it's not always when when the the users of this stuff are probably sometimes better people to ask than 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 the people who manufacture it because the people who use it um you know they know um they know how to how to get it configured for either you know third party hardware or third party uh things like software for things like uh, pan adapters and stuff like that so i would really urge people to to use these um use these forums and facebook some people don't like to use facebook but the forums are still a good a good source um a source of information i've just seen a few more questions so let's quickly get to them um uh oh you know how says good to see you um uh i'd like to i would like to use the reference port on the rspdx what should i buy um so the reference port on the rspdx um you can get something like a gpsdo um but if you if you really and like i said ask on the forums but if you if you really are stuck um come through to our our support system and we'll point you in the right direction it's the leo bodnar gpsdo um uh, reference source uh, a reset palette to factory default would be handy um so that's an uh, yeah so i don't think there's a yeah i don't think there is a reset is i'm not sure there's a reset in the extio version um that we do have in the main version that may be something else we'll need, we'll have to have a look at um but if 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 we can then we will um then we'll have a look at uh, doing that in the extio version but there is definitely a reset to defaults uh in the in the main version of sdr uno um the plugins from airspy will be compatible with sdr uno i guess it requires its own plugins so um the plugins oh for the plugin system no so so the sdr uno plugin system is completely new uh new plugins will need to be written for it we've uh we've got some that uh we're just finishing up for us ourselves uh we'll show all that in the next stream um and we've got a number of developers that are looking at um either developing plugins now or they'll look to do them in the future um but anybody anybody can write their own plugin um we provide a template we provide the um like the source code for an example so if you've got an idea for a plugin um you know you're you're more than welcome to have a go and we'll publish uh, information about that um we'll explain more about that in next week's stream um i hope some plugins for satellite will be added like iridium on mimosat well like i said anybody anybody is is, is free to write a plugin for sdrudo to do to do anything so um i hope there are some really good plugins that that, that come from the system um Crittenden. Oh, that's 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 no problem. Uh, having an RSP one A, I'm now wondering how I can improve the waterfall to show signals delineated. Is there an adjustment I should be using? Um, you can well the uh, so the improvement on the waterfalls you can make. Uh, you can adjust the contrast. Um, you can adjust the palette um you can adjust the speed uh, of the update but really this the contrast and the gain controls i think that you you want to have a look at there and like i said the default for the exto version i think is spec spectran and we use spectran ext because it just has that uh has that contrast that initial sort of contrast that you can still modify with the with the with the contrast and the and the gain settings okay um i think think that's it I, I noticed a lot of questions came in after i turned the webcam off i, I won't be offended honest <laughs> but uh, no seriously i really appreciate everybody uh everybody turning up um the video will be up shortly once it's finished processing and uh if um you know please please leave comments uh and if you have any questions for uh, uh sdr uno or or rsp related 
who can come through to our on our ticket system but by far the best people to ask are the people that already use it in the field as it were um but um anyway i hope that's all been very helpful to everybody hope everybody's staying safe and um uh, keep an eye out on our webinars page uh strplay.com slash webinars uh john maintains a a list of all of the upcoming streams on there and we've got something uh, we've got something quite special coming in the next couple of weeks so please keep an eye out on there on our social media as well and john will keep everybody up to up to speed with what's happening so um everybody stay safe and uh i'll see you on the next stream thanks a lot guys bye bye